Mars is where ancient Moors came from, part two. All right, so we're going to be starting off with the Sumerians and the origin of the name. The term Sumerian is the common name given to the ancient non-Semitic speaking inhabitants of Mesopotamia by the East Semitic speaking Akkadians. The Sumerians refer to themselves as Ug Sag Giga, phonetically, literally meaning the black headed people. And to their land, Kayin Gir, meaning place of the noble lords. Come on now, bro. But, you know, when they refer to, you know, saying that Sumeria literally means the black headed people. I mean, what, what else is there to say when you have them describing themselves as this and you see, you know, um, the artifacts and, you know, the paintings and inscriptions of what they looked like? I mean, you know, it speaks for itself. But guess what? In your history books, they don't tell you this. They do not tell you this because it's meant to hide your history. Understand this. So now I'm going to be talking about the Amorites. Okay, the Amorites, Sumerian, Martu, Akkadian, Tidnam, or Amaruam, Egyptian Amar, Hebrew Imori, ancient Greek, that word. We're an ancient Semitic speaking people from Syria who also occupied large parts of southern Mesopotamia from the 21st century BC to the end of the 17th century BC where they established several prominent city-states in existing locations notably Babylon which was raised from a small town to an independent state and a major city the term Amaru in Akkadian and Sumerian texts refers to both them and to their principal deity the Amorites are also mentioned in the Bible as inhabitants of Canaan both before and after the con conquest of the land under Joshua. So now look, I'm finna read the second to last sentence, man, because it's prominent, man. You have to you have to really pay attention, bro. The term Amaru in Akkadian in Sumerian text refers to both them and to their principal deity. Now the term Amaru Tupac Amaru Shakur. And Tupac gets his name from the Peruvian king. You feel me? The indigenous Peruvian king that fought against Spanish white people. So look, man, they found this artifact too, just so y'all know, in Mexico. So I'm just finna give y'all something, man. You got Tupac Amaru. And you had Tupac Amaru II. And look both of them up. They were born in Southern America. Southern America. Peru. Then you have this artifact found in Mexico. Which looks just like Tupac Shakur. So that's Central America. And then you have Tupac Amaru Shakur. Being born in North America. Later. So what am I telling you? And it's the same person reincarnating himself and Tupac in his music. For those that know, talked about reincarnation a lot. I listen to so much Pac. He got like at least nine or ten songs where he mentions reincarnation. My favorite Pac song is Only Fear of Death. Just because of that alone. He understood it on a deeper level. So for those that don't get this, man, this is nothing new. This fight is something that's been going on. This is nothing new, man. If you don't realize this by now, Amaru and the Amorites. And notice the name more in there. That's the whole reason I'm bringing it up. But understand that this is Sumerian, Akkadian. Pay attention. All right, so we're going to be getting into the etymology of the word Cairo. That's the Egyptian city. So... Egyptians often refer to Cairo as Mazur, the Egyptian Arabic name for Egypt itself, emphasizing the city's importance for the country. Its official name, al Kahira, means the vanquisher or the conqueror, supposedly, supposedly due to the fact that the planet Mars, come on now, the conquering star was rising at the time when the city was founded. I can continue on with that and, you know, talk about you know, the ancient city of Heliopolis 
and the eye of the sun and you know make those connections and also the man breaker part but you know man you see it bro you've read it it's there in front of you mars once again makes an appearance when referring to ancient Kemet. so i'm gonna be getting into these mysterious rocks that were found in Kemet recently 2018 Mysterious extraterrestrial rocks are unlike anything ever found on Earth, according to scientists. The Hypatia stone, pebbles found in Egypt, which once came from a huge rock that was several meters wide, have long been known to have come to Earth from somewhere else. But new research shows that they are even more alien than we thought, having been formed outside of our solar system and even before our sun existed. That's the conclusion of new research that looked at how the strange rocks were formed by exploring what minerals can be found inside them. In 2013, the rocks were found not to have come from Earth, and two years later, scientists confirmed that they had not come down to Earth as part of any known meteorite or comet. The new work aimed to look at the minerals found inside and find how they were made up. When Hypatia was first found to be extraterrestrial, it was a sensation, but these latest results are opening up bigger questions about its origins, said Dr. Marco Andrioli, a research fellow at the School of Geosciences at the University of the Witterwatersend and a researcher on the study. All right, so just from my understanding of them speaking in code, I understand certain things about this when they speak about this rock. I want to see if those who know will understand it as well. So, of course, you know, they're alluding to certain things. I've put it all out there for you, and so have they. I don't credit myself for this. I credit them for, you know, speaking in code and, you know, breaking it down. So, this isn't the only time they speak in code. When they talk about, you know, recently they talked about um, an asteroid coming from Mars, that life started on Mars. This is what scientists are saying. You know, this is proven. This is something they've been talking about for some years now. And they're speaking about it, you know, openly. They're putting it in the mainstream headlines. But what you have to realize is that the etymology of the asteroid is something within itself. So understand what an asteroid is when you look up the etymology for the word. All right, so this is the etymology for asteroid. One of the planetoids orbiting the sun, found mostly between Mars and Jupiter. 1802, coined probably by German-born English astronomer William Herschel from Greek asteroidius. Star-like, from aster, star. Edios, form, shape. Now look, man, as y'all know, aster, we're going to get into Astarte. You feel me? The goddess. You know what I'm saying? But it says star-like. Star-like, form, and shape. Now, what that is really telling you is that it's a light basically a light that has a form sort of like when you see a, a plant playing in the sky from far distances or just something with some light you know emitting from it you know so just keep that in mind this is what an asteroid is it's not actually something that in which you know is the rock and all of that you know what i'm saying this is something else because it's always been something else other than what you think it is. The etymology, the original the original meaning of the word is what they're talking about when they talk about, you know, these things coming from other places. The Dogon even mentioned things like this, these lights. You know what I'm saying? It's always been the same way. They're communicating. You know, if you've ever um, done research on William Cooper, you know about him when he was talking about working on a naval base and he's seeing a UFO go into the water. It's the same way. Understand it's on a deeper level. You know what I'm saying? They're talking in code in front of you. So when they talk about finding these asteroids, you know, um, saying that an ancient asteroid came from Mars to Earth and that's where, you know, um, life came from. They're talking in code. Read these articles. Read what they have to say and understand the code behind these words, you know. They're talking about life coming from Mars because of a rock. That's what they're trying to, you know, um, assume. But on a deeper level, they're talking about a race, a species coming from Mars interdimensionally and coming to Earth and creating something. You feel me? Understand that. Also understand that this rock that they found in Kemet 
is named after Hypatia, you feel me, of Alexandria. So, for those that know history, know that Alexandria was a place of learning. And um, in actuality, they had a lot of the um, knowledge from Kemet that was lost. And, you know, they created something. You know, when Ptolemy them came and, you know, they did their thing. You know, forced themselves to be pharaohs, you feel me? Wanted to be like us so bad. But Hypatia was, you know, I make fun of women a lot for having peanut brains. And Hypatia was a master, you know, mathematician. And around this time, you had Christianity being influenced in this era, you know? And what they were doing was, you know, the three, you know, 325 canceling a chia. You feel me? We know about that, where they introduce Jesus to you as an actual person instead of just an energy, which they knew in Kemet. So this is when politics and religion became one, the church and the state, you know, and things started to change. Hypatia's death, which was very violent, was because of this person named Cyril. And, you know, they were learning a lot of things, you know, they were finding out a lot of things about life. You know, they were philosophers outside of these mathematicians as well. They were thinkers. You know, Alexandria was a place of learning. It was built around learning. And the people in power, your papacy, you feel me, your church, your religious people, your leaders, you feel me? They didn't like that. They were scared of that. Because they understood the power that the mind possesses when you start to unravel a lot of the mysteries of the earth. So they had her killed. And also around this time, this same person, Cyril, expelled the Jews from um, Alexandria. You know, because they were starting stuff in the streets outside of the synagogues. I've done my research on this. They stripped Hypatia, you feel me, beat her, chopped her up in pieces. And then burnt her. And then left some of her um, limbs out in front of a place. You feel me? Real gruesome. And honestly, this um, after her death, the Dark Ages started. The quote-unquote Dark Ages. Understand that. We know who ruled in the Dark Ages. You should know. But Alexandria, you know, I can say something about that within itself. Because a lot of the catacombs... And a lot of the caves and the, you know, paintings on the wall, they have melanin on them. And you just look at her and you're like, eh, it doesn't match up, especially for the time period. This was the fourth century with this, you know, um, catacomb right here. It's depicted in a biblical scene. And they have black faces and black skin. And they've also tried to whitewash this painting as well. You know, they've tried to do this for a lot of stuff. But people don't peep game and they don't speak out on it. So, you know, people just think, oh, wait, hey, you know, it is what it is. No. These people are trying to whitewash your history, as they always do. And Hypatia was about to change the game because women were viewed a certain way. So when they let women become thinkers and things like that, this would have put that inspiring, you know, seed inside of the woman's brain. And, you know, it would have created a wave effect. You feel me? It would have created a wave of consciousness for women to, you know, be thinkers and not just nurturers you know which they can also be but to think outside of the box to see that other women can do this as well you know and it actually be promoted and she was a prominent figure in Alexandria this wasn't just a nobody she was known Plato wrote about her you know a lot of people wrote about her and Plato also wrote about Atlantis he got that secondhand story from someone else from ancient Kemet who knew about it so this is a lot you know that's connected with Greece and Rome and Alexandria Kemet it's all connected because that's where they get the information from Kemet understand that and also there was a lot of killing going on in these areas as well they were gruesome you know it's a lot that you don't know about history even if your history books tell you about it in school they don't go in detail about a lot of the stuff that happened and why it happened you know your political leaders as always and your people in power your um individuals that tell you what to do they always have these things in the background they know the artifacts they know the history and they know the power behind a lot of unveiling of history and just you know Understanding that if you find this out, that you can be in power as well. Fear is an illusion when you see things a certain way. So they don't want you to understand that. So that's why it's just so hard on finding your history. But once you actually piece things together, you see it for what it really is. You know? The Legend of Malta. So Malta is an island 
off the coast of Spain, Italy, and off of North Africa, which, you know, individuals found long-headed, elongated skulls, once again, in a cave. But this cave is an underground cave that has three levels of being underground. And they found 7,000 skulls with no heads, skeletons, and elongated skulls. And also a statue to Manon, one of the snake goddesses. Phenotian snake goddess, by the way. So with that being known, I want individuals to understand this. There's also 11 megalithic statues and, you know, just structures on the island of Malsa, which is not a huge island, by the way. This is because there were, obviously, an ancient civilization of advanced Martians that came here and set up, you know, base. And just understand that, also, these skulls were never DNA tested. They were hidden from the public. And they've never been seen again since the 1980s when they were found. Never seen again. This is not a joke. This... Super elongated one, you feel me? This odd-shaped one is what people really were interested in. They found over, I think, a dozen of these elongated skulls. But they've hidden them from the public. And also the Phenotians were in Spain. This is proven, you know, the templates, the, you know, artifacts that were found. So, you know, just add that in your notebook as well. I know it sounds strange to you, but the world, owes a debt to the Africans of Asia. In the following presentation, you'll find out exactly why. Just give me a few seconds. Your ancestors never intended to let you down. In this book, called The Gods of Northern Buddhism, we find a name, the Asian name of the supreme deity of the universe. His name is Sambo. They say when nothing else was, Sambo was. The name of the God of the universe to the people of Asia. And there are many places that carry this name. This is a depiction of Sambo. This is not an African statue, this is from Asia. And many places in Asia are called Sambo Judasia, the land of the descendants of Sambo. Various spellings of the word and the name Sambo can be found throughout Asia. Negas, the divine people of Buddhism. This is a second century depiction of Gautama the Buddha being given his first bath by the divine people of Buddhism called Negas, a tribe in Asia called Negas, the divine people of all the people of Asia, symbolized throughout Asia by the serpent or the dragon. That is their symbol. The Nega means serpent or dragon, the snake found at the entrance of every temple, the Nega, on the roads, on the hills, in the caves, the symbol of the Asiatic black man, the tribe called the Negas, the divine people. There are cities also throughout Asia that carries this particular name, Nega. It can be seen at all ceremonies dealing with worship of God. From the Nile Valley to the Indus Valley, on tombstones, a symbol of immortality because of the serpent's ability to change his skin is a sign of never dying and is used throughout the planet Earth, North, South America, Egypt, Asia, Africa, throughout the world. It's the symbol of life after death, the nega, the serpent. In all ancient cultures, in all ancient religions, the serpent is the symbol, the nega, the symbol of divinity, of God. The original inhabitants of Southeast Asia was called the Mons, an African tribe. In order to confirm what these people look like, you have to go to the archaeological finds from Davarati, a French uh, archaeological research finding confirming the original inhabitants. There's no depictions uh, preceding these of the original inhabitants of Southeast Asia. The people, the descendants of Sambo, the Asiatic black man. The seven serpents, or seven rays, or the negas surrounding his head represent the cosmic forces that afford him protection. He is a divine representation of cosmic forces, and those seven serpents represent his divine mission, 
He does not come of his own. He's a manifestation of the cosmos. The serpents or the Nega represent cosmic forces which is at his command, which represent him as a divinity. He is the manifestation of the universe. That is the symbol of those serpents you see surrounding his head. In essence, the seven serpents are cosmological, dealing with astrology, it's astrological representations of those forces of the cosmos that he represents. He is a universal monarch, a universal king, which he manifests and he shows evidence of. The black man of Asia, the original inhabitants of Asia. He is a human being of flesh and blood. He comes as a teacher, as a manifestation of God. His teachings are called the Dharma. He is called the Buddha, the intelligent one, the one who has achieved intelligence, or the genie, the conqueror. He comes to explain the laws of the universe. He comes to confirm that there is, in fact, life after death. When the Buddha appears, he appears as a preacher, and he preaches the Dharma, that existence is a continual cycle of death and rebirth, and that each person's position and well-being in life is determined by his or her behavior in their previous lives. For example, good deeds may lead to rebirth as a wise and wealthy person or as a being in heaven, and a person's evil deed could lead to rebirth as a poor and sickly person, or even rebirth in hell. He preaches that you reap what you sow. A Buddha also teaches that it's possible to break out of this cycle and gain a kind of perfect peace and happiness by practicing righteousness. They are manifestations of God. According to their prophecies, they promise to prove and make manifest through a Buddha or a Jina life after death before the end of this century. How can you teach a people to know God if he himself does not know God? If you try teaching a Christian that God is also a human being or manifests himself in the form of a human being or makes himself known through a human being, they will say that you're crazy, that you don't believe in God. Meanwhile, they admit that he is a mystery God who is unknown. They teach not to make any likenesses of him, yet they adorn their walls and churches with pictures, images, statues like human beings. They also say he is a spirit that cannot be seen. They cannot see him, yet they believe in him. In order to remove all doubt, the Buddha, the enlightened one, the intelligent one, the genie, the conqueror, decided to make manifest to the world irrefutable evidence. They wanted to prove to a people in the future the manifestation of God, that God manifests himself through human beings, through men. Now prophecy is irrefutable. A prophecy is a written confirmation of what will happen at a future date. These people, the black people of Asia, predicted or prophesized what they would do 2,500 years into the future. The prophecy states that he would send something from the past and join it with something from the future. Something from the material world and join it with something from the spiritual world. The union of both the past and the future worlds and the spiritual and the material worlds would be contained in the revelation of a secret mystic diagram called the Mandela of Two Parts. This is a depiction of the future Buddha who would make this manifest at a point before the end of this century. Now the scriptures of the world have all prophesied that the end of the age, which we are now entering, the age of Aquarius, we shall see the revelation of that which is secret and the emergence into the light of day of that which has hitherto been concealed and veiled. This, our present age, is that time, the end of the cycle, the beginning of the new age.
So what a lot of people don't understand about slavery is that it was done in reaction to finding out that you have Martian DNA as melanated beings. And for those of you that didn't know that you had Martian DNA, they were going to beat it into you that you weren't human. But also tell you that you were human. Three-fifths of a human being. Called you nigga. Called you Sambo. You feel me? Nigeria. Niger. Niger River. Nagas. You feel me? Like, understand this, man. Those are countries. African countries. You, I don't even like using the word African because you know that's a white man's name. I, I know that. Those are black lands, as they would like to be called, black lands. And for those that didn't even understand what slavery was about, it's about beating Christianity into you and telling you that, you know, um, you need to accept this white man as your savior. They were scared of you. You feel me? They were scared of you. Because that DNA can be activated at any time, reactivated. That knowledge, that consciousness, that's what they're afraid of. I'm putting it out there so you know. And you can research that for yourself. That's an ancient royal bloodline. You know what I'm saying? That goes back to Mars that you have as a melanated being. And they surrounded by him. Once they found that out, they went into panic mode and they strive to fight against the Moors. They talk about a 20th century war. This is a newspaper back then talking about this. But of course they didn't go into detail about, you know, why it really happened. They talk about, you know, Islam making people go crazy to fight. Moors had to fight as well. The Moors that ran the earth at this point in time, they lost country after country because their shift was changing. As always, because once you reach your peak of, you know, just society and education, strongholds of, you know, just your, your country and just your people, the people under you seem to get you know lazy with it they seem to take it for advantage you know just don't take advantage of it and just think that it's going to be all good and as that goes on as you say you know the elders try to tell the younger ones and the younger ones are like oh old man whatever a lot of people don't even know the Moors, you know what i'm saying um of europe influenced the fashion they started caring about fashion look at this more he got six rings on chain on gold earrings did you not notice that? This was on part one. They were quote unquote fly. They cared about material things. This is what they started to care about instead of the knowledge like we do now. And when I talk about European fashion, when I did my video on hip hop turning from European fashion to, you know, saying from the dope dealers wearing their stuff to now, you know, people worshiping European fashion. Really, they're worshiping Moorish fashion, which is not a good thing. A certain, you know, era of Moorish fashion, Moorish fashion, where they weren't they weren't intelligent as they used to be. They started caring about material things. That's the black man now. That's them now. Still in that mind state. And the Europeans of that time, oh, this is a place of fashion. Your France and all of that. The blacks made that the place of fashion. The Moors did. But back into this. Three-fifths of a human being. Three-fifths of a human being. They beat it into you, you feel me? Told you you weren't human. And during those slave plantations, if you got, you know what I'm saying, a mulatto child, if you just happen to have a mulatto child or whatever... They were able to go to schools and have privileges that the other people didn't. You know why? Because they wanted to put it in your subconscious mind that, oh, you can be accepted when you have a non-black baby or mixed baby. Because they wanted a world with nothing but human DNA. But once they figured out that there's a whole continent full of y'all, India has a large percentage of y'all, you feel me, just the melanin. That that became lost and the ideas became, you know, just different because this was some take over the world thing. Like people don't even understand the 1500s was 15 and 1600s. 
white men went all over the world. They went to Japan in the 1500s as well. They went to a lot of places. Spain, the Jesuits, the Jews, they went a lot of places traveling because they wanted to put these social constructs in order to where these people need to be white in the future. It's demanded by those governments. And what I'm saying is factual. And the Japanese went along with this, the Koreans went along with this, and the Chinese went along with this during the 1500s. Because the white man truly believed that he could, you know, exterminate the black man off of the planet and, you know, just take away his Martian DNA and make him human. That was their goal. They were scared of you. But they still worshipped you. Because look at these original marine uniforms. That's Moorish. This is from the military.com. They have a black man in the Moorish suit. They're showing it from the beginning to where it is now. They're telling you that they still look up to you. But in that sense of not understanding history, a lot of people didn't understand that. Naga, serpentine energy. When I talk about Nagasaki, Japan, Naga, that's the serpent. Saki is alcohol. But alcohol is also called the spirit. So it's serpent spirit. That's the name of that city. And as you just saw with Nagas, you know that that's us from the times before. So the people in power, when the black man lost all power, the Chinese, the Koreans, the, um, the Japanese, they all fell down, you feel me? And the Japanese, they decided to, you know, just let the Anu tribe die off. They don't want y'all to see the Anu tribe from the 15, the 16, 1700s, or even the 1800s. They don't want y'all to see that. A lot of this stuff is collected in vaults that you can't see. Because they went along with something. They know this. And when that, because the Moors lost power of the world. When the Moors were in power, all everything was cool. You feel me? Every, not, not everything was cool, but they were cool with doing business with them. But once the Moorish Empire fell, that's when those other tribes or just other countries started going along with what the white man had to do. You know what I'm saying? And they realized, oh, these people are pale. They have, you know, um, they have potential to become white in the future. Nagasaki was bombed purposely. Hero, Hero. Horus. <laughs> you ain't peeping game though, huh? You ain't peeping game. Bomb those two places specifically. Wonder what history Nagasaki had. Because when you look it up on Wikipedia, man, you know what I'm saying? It just jumps from 2nd century, 3rd century, all the way to the 19th century. I mean, you just going to skip 1,700 years for a place of Japan in which we know has a large history? Massive, extensive history? You telling me that this just disappears and you don't know nothing? Stop it. Stop the shenanigans. So, understand that. That slavery thing was done to put it in your mind. Eventually, they was going to free you. They tried everything they could. You know what I'm saying? Because they did not want y'all to know that you were Martians. Alien DNA. That can be reactivated. Blavatsky, them, when they went to India, they ran across a lot of this stuff. You feel me? And they were inspired by Paschal Beverly Randolph, of course. Elijah Crowley was inspired by Paschal Beverly Randolph. It's the same story and over and over and over again. You need our help. You need our help. And this is what they finally start to understand. You can't get rid of us. You can't get rid of us. No matter what you do, you have to deal with us. If anything, we're dealing with you. Because a lot of us are asleep. So when that awakening happens, which a lot of people think is real soon, and I, I happen to see it as well because our people are dead right now, like, dead dead subconscious and consciously talking about melanated beings they at a real dead state they don't even know their history they don't even know what a majority of these things are happening for it's happening soon a lot of people can't grasp that 
A lot of this stuff is being amped up because of this. Once y'all wake up, everything will change. You know, that's the that's the thing right there. You still have black men beefing in areas, still have them focused on nonsense, material possessions, um, chasing black women, you feel me, chaotic state. You feel me, throwing their life away, trying to impress women, things like that. This is still going on in a black man's mind instead of actually understanding who he is and the power that he possesses on the inside and how many people actually worship him. The depression of the black man in America or really just... Globally, because they've been beat in the head by these people for so many centuries that they just could not see it for what it is. When I talk about the spirits and reincarnation, I'm talking about people being born in certain situations knowing that they will be a frequency of truth. Certain people know this. They know that they will be born to speak the truth. These things were designed to happen. Nothing is a coincidence, as I always say. Once these things start lining up, that's when you'll realize that it's not a game anymore. Once you start really paying attention and breaking down history, every place has them. Megalithic beings, megalithic structures, temples, underwater civilizations. You know what I'm saying? Caves that go underground, underground city, all the same thing. Billionaires have a lot of these, you know, Historical artifacts in their homes. Stolen from museums. A lot of stuff goes missing. They have your faces in their homes. Like it's all good. Ancient Kimmy knew about this. The serpentine energy. You feel me? The serpent energy. Nagas. Niggas. That's you. All of the, You know what I'm saying? Like, I tripped off. I never was the one to be like, oh, I'm going to stop saying nigga. Bro, that's how we've been talking since the beginning of time. You don't even know. <laughs> it's my nigga. You feel me? That's my nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's Nagas. That's a tribe. That's your people. They talking about your energy. Kundalini. Awakening. Majority of the goddesses holding snakes. Serpentine energy. Nah, guys, that's the snake. That's the black man. There's a lot of different races as well and a lot of different species that were interdimensional that came here. I'm not worried about those. They can do what they do. The Nomos taught the Dogon tribe. Now, for those that don't know about the Dogon tribe of Mali, they really was all over. But Mali, M.A., you feel me? The M.A., that's there. But the Dogon tribe was taught by the nomos, fish god, amphibious. They taught them the astrological things. And just, you know what I'm saying, because the Dogon tribe was a tribe in which evaded capture of being slaves. They evaded slavery. They evaded the wars of the Muslims, you feel me? Because the North Africans, Berbers, went and destroyed West Africa. West Africa had the Great Wall of Benin, which was five and a half times larger than the Great Wall of China. A whole circle with a city around it in the middle. Benin. They avoided all of that. They avoided tribes. You feel me? Tribal warfare. All because of the Nomos. Being in contact with them. Staying in contact with them. The Dogon tribe were a tribe in which is highly um, respected by Europeans. Highly respected. Because they found out about Sirius A and Sirius B before the telescope was even invented by the white man. They knew about the density. They knew about the whole solar system. They still know about it. The symbolism. They weren't a tribe in which was about warfare. They were about knowledge. The Nomos came to them to teach them. And they still move around to this day. Understand that there's always different types of beings that came here they not playing about this at all and they still do ceremonies representing the nomos that taught them the nomos were obviously respectable you have certain species that came to earth that were disrespectful that's a whole video within itself but that's similar to what i'm doing here the martians you had certain you know places that came up around the same time sumeria and Kemet came up around the same time but there's differences in there but just like I say, Sumeria, 
Samurai. 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 The M-E-R. And that's what I was going to talk about with Mari. Which was a part of Sumeria. M-A-R-I. Mori. You say Mori. That's probably how you say it. Mori. Not Mari. And as usual, you have the black faces on there. It's not a surprise to me. The Legend of the Black Asian Hun Dynasty. The Huns of Attila. Alright, so I'm going to be reading from this quote from the historian Jordan S. 6th century common era who wrote the only ancient account of the Goths still extant includes their interactions with the Huns, describing Attila at length. He was a man born into the world to shake the nations, the scourge of all lands, who in some way terrified all mankind by the rumors noised abroad concerning him. He was haughty in his walk, rolling his eyes hither and thither, so that the power of his proud spirit appeared in the movement of his body. He was indeed a lover of war, yet restrained in action, mighty in counsel, gracious to suppliants, and lenient to those who were once received under his protection. He was short of stature, with a broad chest and a large head. His eyes were small, his beard was thin and sprinkled with gray. He had a flat nose and a swarthy complexion, revealing his origin. Swarthy. Come on now. Revealing his origin. Revealing where he comes from. So look. If that's not the only thing you have with, you know, this person called Attila. I just want you to understand this too. He ravaged a lot of, you know, um, lands. And he's from the Zengbai area. And also, this is Inner Mongolia, Central Asia, Central China, you feel me? And anybody that knows about, you know, China knows that there was warlike situations all around these dynasties, all around them, man. And the greatest warrior from this area just happens to be Attila the Hun. And the story goes that he inherited land from a cousin or uncle from that, that passed from another dynasty and inherited him a bunch of land. And with that land came a lot of warriors. So they went out from Mongolia, bro. Understand this from Mongolia and the accounts of how deep he rolled was it varies from either a quarter million to five hundred thousand. And when they came through someone's village, they left it just desolate. Of course, you know, it's not honorable. Of course not. Because a lot of people didn't like them. Of course not. They took women, things like that. But understand this. He had a sword. Black samurai. He had a sword. And guess what the sword's name is? This is what the Romans decided to call his sword. They, called to call, they decide to call it the sword of Mars. The sword of God. People don't understand that he had the Romans shook around this era. Because, as they talk about with the Dark Ages starting, Attila was killed a couple decades back from this. So, the start of the, you know, Dark Ages had just begun. And the Romans were scared of him. They heard his name. They heard of the rumors of him and what he was doing to other places. And everybody created a name to you know to decide how to how to call them and describe them some created derogatory terms as the dynasty that was you know right next to him they decided to call them you know the slaves of the peoples they you know interpreted what these things mean in the translations huna it's the huns dynasty this was them and a lot of people don't understand that when they decided to call it, the Romans decided to call it the Sword of Mars. What do you think they're talking about? They're talking about the power of the Martians. They're talking about the power of the Martians. They were saying maybe he fell in, you know, came into contact with this thing in which gave him 
power over this because how he, you know, just the places he dominated and the things that he did, man. And also his ending. <laughs> hey, man, when y'all be, I'm going to ask y'all something, bro. You ever seen them animes where they have, you know, the village and there's this, you know, um, invading tribe that comes in and just destroys everything. A, a peaceful village. You feel me? A peaceful village where they just chilling. Then comes this group just tearing stuff up violently, showing no remorse for anything. And this was a village in which was peaceful for hundreds of years. This is the Huns. They're describing the Huns. But this wasn't the only group. You had other ones as well. Other dynasties. They're describing the Huns, my brother. They're describing the Huns. All of those animes, it's not a joke. That is what really happened. Understand history. Understand history. And also, for those that, you know, still disbelieve this, they have depictions from the books, you feel me, that authors have wrote, of course, because when you name him as Swarthy, you have to go by the description in which they gave him from the people that were around the 6th century. I believe Attila was around in the 5th century, so this wasn't too far away from that. Understand that when they write about him, they're speaking about the rumors, the things they ran across, the people, and this is what they come to. This is a lot of stuff that's hidden from you, man. Black Samurais. So when y'all bring up that Black Samurai from the 1500s or 1800s, you know what I'm saying? I'm not taking that, bro. We have ancient Black dynasties. Ancient Black dynasties. Understand that. The Shang Dynasty, the Tang Dynasty, all of them, they showing you the same thing, man. They showing you. Take back your history, bro. It's not just here. Understand. Maybe you'll be more accepting of learning about it. Now that you understand that those are black languages, black culture. At its origin, its creators, its mentality. Understand that this wasn't just, you know, they didn't just have groups that were warring, killing. You had groups of Buddhists. And also, Attila was his capital city. Just happened to be named Buddha, by the way. It just happened to be named Buddha. Oh, yeah, in the end of Attila, he had, um, you know, they call him ugly and all this, right? But it was more of a strategic thing, the way they killed him. It's some real anime shit, but it's real. Real dynasties. They had a girl who was a princess of, you know, um, a daughter of a, another dynasty. I can't think of the name at the moment. But it was their wedding day, their wedding night. And he happened to, um, his throat happened to just get choked up with blood while in bed with her. And they always, you know, they never really accused her of it. But her father was, you know, rumored to have something to do with it. Because, obviously, if they claim he was a savage, I mean, not I mean, you can claim, bro, it's more of... It was a strategic way to get him out of the way. This is some real anime stuff. A beautiful daughter sent with the mission to kill him. Poison his drink. Poison his food on their wedding night. Beautiful. Sent to kill him. Understand that, man. Those animes wasn't playing, bro. They telling you a true story. They're telling your story. And they buried him in the river and let the water run over it. He's buried in a river in Asia, Mongolia. And understand, the Great Wall of, you know, China was built to keep Mongolians and other tribes out because they would attack the wall fiercely, go in there, rape, kill, and just steal. 
so those that wanted them out so they can meditate and do you know what I'm saying just work on certain things that's what the wall was built for and it wasn't until a certain dynasty took over all of that start renaming things translations understand that understand Chinese Asian Mongolian history understand their history brother your history ancient the Shang the Tang the Jin you feel me you can make those connections easily black man wielding a sword in Asia took down over 70 armies over 70 countries and man like just understand rolled half a million deep the power in which he kept people like just understand the mentality they don't go in detail about that because they want you to think you know nothing of it the romans knew the romans were you know in your history books for great achievements but yet they were scared of this individual black asian Attila the Hun. The legend of Marvila. Alright, so the town of Marvila is obviously Mobile, Alabama. But it's also, you know, the tribe of Tuscaloosa. You know the name that means black warrior who had on, you know, a turban like a moor and a symbol like, you know, St. John's Road. You feel me? The Knights of St. John Road. They're telling you something. But I wanted to get into something, man. A lot of individuals ain't paying attention to history, obviously. And Ma Vila. I notice a lot about this name. But I'm going to get into something. You know, a lot of people have been searching for the town for hundreds of years. Europeans have been searching for it because Ma Vila played a, a vital role in how, you know, um, the indigenous people were treated in America and the standards that were put in place. It was not a nice place. You know, just because of the encounter they had with Tuscaloosa. For years, scholars and archaeologists have poured over the four known accounts of the 16th century Spanish explorer's trip. Three were written by people who made the trip. The fourth was written by the son of a Spaniard and an Incan princess decades later from oral accounts told by survivors. According to the accounts, De Soto made an imposing chief, Tuscaloosa, kidnapped him and demanded slave labor, grain, and women as he had Across most of the south, Tuscaloosa led De Soto to Mar Villa, where an ambush awaited him that October day in 1540. Accounts say the battle lasted all day, with thousands of Indians killed, most of De Soto's supplies captured, dozens of his men dead, and scores more wounded. Rather than head to Pen Penascola Bay, where supply ships were waiting, De Soto turned the remnants of his band northward, still searching for gold and riches. But his expedition never recovered. De Soto died in the Mississippi wilderness and was buried in the Mississippi River. His followers eventually made their way to Mexico and South America. All right, so for those that don't understand what happened, basically, you know, De Soto, Hernando De Soto, was sent to America where they discovered the land, not quote unquote discovered, but, you know, invaded basically. And. This is the 1500s. He died in 1540. You feel me? 1542. Fought Tuscaloosa, 1540. And, of course, there's a lot they hide about Tuscaloosa. Alabama area. And um, for people that just want to, you know, um, undermine this situation, understand that Hernando de Soto was going to these places. Him and his, you know, Christian... Spanish Jesuit entourage were going around pretending to convert people and basically using Christianity as a way to sleep with women and you know use them as like sex slaves and then take you know control of places and all of this because you have to understand the mind state of the Spanish Spanish around this time they just you know battles with the Moors which continued even after this situation, they continued to battle Moors from other places. But they finally took control, and they wanted to take control of everything. So whenever they saw a person that was looking like a Moor, or even that melanin, they became enraged because their ancestors, their people, you know what I'm saying, those white women, their white women from back then were slaves to the Berbers, 
you know what I'm saying, to a lot of Moorish tribes. So this was a vengeance thing with them. So when they came across Tuscaloosa, they demanded slave labor. Understand that. This is the 1540s. And women. And food. Do you not understand this? They just come in your land doing this. But what, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people don't understand is that they never go in detail about Tuscaloosa and what language he speaks. They never talk about an interpreter. They don't talk about any of that. So, he came to his land. And he died in this area. He didn't make he came to the south and never made it out of the south. Met a person they call the Black Warrior. Did damage to this level. That Soto isn't um as praised as a Christopher Columbus in your books, your history textbooks, because he did succeed, but he failed at the same time. You know, he had a mission to do. He did it, but he didn't make it out. That fight with Tuscaloosa, you have to understand. This is when they realized that they had to come full force with how they come to America. If they have people like Tuscaloosa around. Tuscaloosa was obviously in contact with Moors from other places. Because, just think about it, man, in your history books. They tell you about the Trojan horse thing with the Romans and the Greeks, right? They tell you about that, that whole era, right? About them having a Trojan horse with people set up and then bringing it as a gift. And then all of the, you know, warriors pop out of the Trojan horse and, you know, just surprise attack this place. They tell you about that one, right? Well, why don't they tell you about this one? This happened as well in the town of Mabila. They did the same thing, an ambush. Because guess what? Tuscaloosa realized something. He didn't even realize. He knew it since the very beginning. This in encounter with Hernando de Soto was tense. It was never a calm, quote-unquote, moment. Never a calm moment. They talk about this, if you read it. And also, I could talk about how Wikipedia all of a sudden decided to add, you know, um, the Rodrigo quote. Rangel. They decided to add that quote in their Wikipedia page about Tuscaloosa with the like a more with the, you know, shield like St. John Rhodes. Why do you think they decided to do that? Why? Why do you think that? You know why I'm saying this? Because I did my research on Tuscaloosa and I had to actually get the book. To find more information on him from a person that followed him, you know, followed Hernando de Soto when coming to the town of Mavila. So you telling me for all this time, since the internet has been created, since Google has been up in Wikipedia, I know that connection. They did not have this quote in here. This quote from the book. Do you know why that is? It's either people from my comment section on a video that I did about Chief Tuscaloosa put pressure on them. Or... They are listening. I happen to believe a little bit of both. Obviously. Because. What I'm understanding is that. To be the one. To be the one. This isn't your only history. You know. Bringing them back from the grave. Letting their legacies carry on. It's a deep thing. Making the connections. This has to happen. Other worlds know this. To be the one. I am the one. You should be the one. See. A higher level of understanding. Knowing that you have their attention. Knowing that a shift will happen. Knowing that. It's greater than doing YouTube videos and putting the information out there. It's about a level of awareness. Of understanding. And it coming back to you slowly but surely. Making those connections. 
Nobody pointed me to Tuscaloosa. I, I haven't heard him mention from anyone. Out of all the teachers that I watch, and I, that's not even to credit myself. That's to credit the shift that's about to happen. He's not the only one. There's a ton of them. History is massive. I want individuals to realize this. From your Sumerian gods, like Marduk, and also with the town of Mavila. What is the Egyptian Kemet word for cat? Oh, you guessed it, Ma, M-A-U. Cats have a whole thing within themselves. Mythological, mystic, magical. That I could get into. Ancient Moors knew this. The Japanese and the Asians knew this. The ancient, you know, blacks of Asia, they knew this. Why do you think they have tigers and lions as a lot of their, you know, statues and stuff? You know why that is? The cat is important. It's mystical. Look at your animes. Who do you see picture more, cats or dogs? The cat is synonymous with Africa. It's native to Africa. Kimmy, that area. Understand that. I'm trying to tell you something. Can't tell you everything. Can only point you there. It's up to you to make those connections. For those that watch this video and have a deeper understanding of history and just, you know, mythology, which might not just, might not be mythology. Because it has to come from somewhere. And if, if you know Kimmy, they call that mythology. But if you really know Kimmy, you know that's not mythology. If you know Greece, the Romans, even Christianity, you know that's not mythology. It's more symbolic, metaphysical, more internal and external to be one. So, understanding Marduk, you see this, Amar 2, Amar Utu, Amaru 2, see that, Amaru 2? The original God. The Anunim. You feel me? Anunim. Everybody think it's a joke. Amar. I can talk about Amar with the Cupid connection. Obviously, their definition means something. Amar. Do you not see this reoccurring? You know, and also Amar once again, let me get into that. For those that don't get it, you obviously have, have more in there. Just like with your Morpheus from the Matrix movie, more fears. He's telling Neo how to become the one. Are they referring that? The Moors knew how to become the one before? Is that what they're saying? It's like Moore getting Freeman playing God in a couple of films. And in Robin Hood, having advanced knowledge, being a Moor. Or for your One Piece show, the Moor, there. We continue. What do you think Smurfs is? The M-U-R is there. Mur. What do you think a mermaid is? Well, the story of Atlantis. Blue-skinned Atlanteans. Underwater. Civilization. Highly advanced. Different species. Telepathic capabilities. You think this is a joke. Everybody thinks it's a joke. Be talking in code. Right in front of y'all. Marvel. Mar. Mostly based on the history of them. It's 
just like the name's Morris Sun. Morris Sun. Morris Sun. Morris. The last names. Marcus. Maurice. Martin. The name Martin. If you look at the original Martin Luther King, why do you think Martin Luther King named himself Martin Luther King Jr.? You think they didn't know their history? They was a part of these, you know, fraternities, but they also had access to certain levels of knowledge. They know who those, you know, Roman individuals were that ruled. The depictions are there. Those popes and, you know, those Christian rulers and, you know, Jesuits. You think they don't know? See, nothing is a coincidence. As I always say, nothing is a coincidence. If you not realizing this by now, nothing is a coincidence, man. Everything happens for a reason. You just have to understand that. A lot of people don't have that discernment. But that comes with a level of awareness. You let people play games with you. You let people talk over you. All the time. You let people tell your history right in front of you. You don't even understand it. You laugh it off. Call people dumb. But haven't done any research. Anybody. Anybody that wants to challenge this. Go ahead. Go ahead, please, so I can embarrass you. Please. And show these young men how to really dissect the individual. Once again, Disney is showing y'all y'all history right in front of y'all. The Disney flick Moana. With Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing a demigod named Maui. And it's about the Polynesians. The ancient Polynesians. You know, I mean, what else is there to say when, you know, the artifacts speak for itself, but also, you know, the language of them, Maury. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's just a little quick one. You can look that up yourself. This is just one part. All right, so while continuing this video, I'm going to bring up the Egyptian god who they say was the first living god on earth, Osiris. And as you can see, his screen is green. His skin is green. You know what that means, bro? You know that, you know, an indication of where he's from, his origins. And I'll be getting to the phrase that I just used real soon. So for those that, you know, still disbelieve this, I'm going to be taking this from... The European Space Agency, clips that they have taken of Mars, and guess what they decide, you know, to take pictures from? Guess what the name of the, the you know, the machine that they use? They call it Optical Spectroscopic Golly Infrared Remote Imaging System. Osiris shows planet Mars in pre-close approach phase. Come on now, bro. I mean, this is not, you know... You think they just named it that for no reason? Why are they taking pictures of Mars? They talking in code in front of you. They're always talking in code in front of you. I just don't see how you don't see this. Please understand this. Now, for those that are paying attention, you remember when I talked about the asteroid and, you know, the etymology behind the word asteroid. So just with the name alone, you have star there, aster, and that's referring to Astarte, you feel me? Ashtaroth, Ashtoreth, the goddess. And what you have to realize is that the etymology for the word star is from stir, S-T-R. And basically, it's an astrological sense of influence of planets and zodiac on human affairs. It's recorded from mid-13th century. Hence, person's, person's fate as figured in the stars. So, look. That should tell you right there. But for those that don't get it. Starbucks, obviously, has Ashtoreth 
Ashtaroth as their logo. Green, of course. But you know, I just I just want individuals to understand this. You can make these connections without me. Now I want to talk about Hypatia. Hypatia was a black woman. That's the whole reason I brought her up. And she was influencing an era in which Christianity was being used. Obviously, in my opinion, you know, just of how I know these things, how these things work in the spiritual realm. She was an incarnation of some goddess, basically. Incarnated to influence the beliefs at that time. To give the people a chance to choose what... Whether or not they would want this, you know, um, shift to happen in this era, it was a test and the people failed. It was black men at this point in time. People don't get that. People that ru ruled Rome at this point, the popes, all of them, they were black. When they show Hypatia, when they show depictions of her murder, you feel me, like, of how it happened, they show black people dragging her through the street. They do that, you know, and have her super pale, but we know that that's not how it was. She was Egyptian. She might have been a lighter shade of black, quote unquote black, but she was still that. She was not from Rome, Greece, not from those areas. She learned in Alexandria, but she was Egyptian, Kemi. If you know the power of this area and the things that they were messing with, the Roman church, the philosophies that they were instilling, they didn't like Hypatia because she was a woman. And she had knowledge, true knowledge, mathematician, astronomer, philosophical. You feel me? Almost said their own philosophical. This was a black woman. If they would have let that influence, then they would have felt like, oh, the mother, go mother goddess is back. They didn't want that for that time. That's why they talk about the black man failing. It's a lot of these moments in history when we ruled. It's a lot of these moments where they did these acts and the act they did to her was so brutal. They should be ashamed of themselves. The white man can have that Roman shit. You can have that. You feel me? It was just a copy of what was going on in Kemet, trying to. They found all of the artifacts and stuff, your Socrates, Plato, all of those individuals, and they said it in certain ways. You know what I'm saying? It's the same way all the time. Bastar, the tribal region of Chattisgarh. Bastar, a tribal land. Bastar is the country of tribes. About 70% of the total population of the Bastar region is tribal, which represents about 30% of the total tribal population of Chattisgarh. The main tribes of the Bastar region are the Gons, Marias, Batras, Morias, Halbas, and Dervas. Bastar tribes have developed a distinct culture, customs or costumes, dialects, cookery, etc., and are known for their tribal art throughout the world. The tribes of the Bastar were among the first in India to work metal and figurines in terracotta. So we're going to look at the, you know, obviously I'm going to put in there, you know, statues from this era. You can see it for yourself. Obviously, they are influenced and their original people were obviously melanated. Not just melanated in the way of where they can throw it off on another, you know, um, species. Or by species, I mean the asteroids, you know what I'm saying, or mongoloid. They can't do that because they still have their, you know... They're their art, man. Dakra is an ancient art based on lost wax bronze casting techniques said to date back more than 4,000 years. But people still think it's a game. People still think it's a game. Not even understanding that Bastor is similar to a certain god. I'm going to let y'all figure that one out. It should be obvious to you. But also, they worship a god that they still worship till this day a goddess named Dante Shwari Dante Shwari come on now man I mean it speaks for itself 
So shout out to the Indians. A lot of people have died protecting this indigenous, you know, um, culture that they have. That, you know, first people that came to this area. They know. They know. India is rich in culture, by the way. Very, very culture. They've maintained it for this reason alone. To let y'all know that this was y'all in the, you know, in the ancient past. Y'all came here, bro. This was y'all. So this is where I'm ending this video. Like, comment, dislike. Peace.